Hello everyone, welcome back to today's video. Today we are actually going to be creating our first C Sharp script for 5M. Now a lot of people have been asking me to do videos on actually scripting 5M resources rather than just callouts and all that. So today we are starting with this. Um, this is something I've just been getting into recently, so I'm not going to be that advanced at it. There's probably easier ways to doing what I'm doing, um, but I've decided to just go ahead and make this video so you can kind of see a easy way to create a loadout plugin for your 5M server. Um, so let's just get into to it if you don't have your scripting environment set up or any of your things up i'll leave a link to the documentation on setting that up for you i will be using writer in this video but a lot of people use uh, visual studio both work perfectly fine you can use both of them um, they go over the visual studio method i will be going over the writer method um, so just feel free to do whatever feels right for you and whatever you have on your computer um, but yeah let's go ahead and get started so we're going to create our new dot net uh, project and i'm just going to call this youtube loadout because that is what we're doing and I'm just going to keep um, I'm going to change my file location to be uh, just a little different so it doesn't get in the uh, way of other projects I'm going to make sure my net framework is 4.5.2 which is what 5M uses it does not use the latest version then I'll just go ahead and create uh, click create and it will go ahead and open up a new project um, so once we let it load for a moment we are going to use nugget to import our uh, 5m core and we're going to be importing the client core not the server side core the reason we're importing the client core is because um, we are going to be using those 5m client methods so we're just going to type 5m in our nugget packages and we're just going to look for the one that says f uh, citizenfx.core.client we're just going to add this to our project and press install uh, give it a second to install and once it turns this down here which is nice it will say it's installed and we're ready to go um, and then we can actually start coding so all scripts inside of 5m have to be extended by base script this is something that they require just to make it work so you can see i just tab that in and then it imported the citizenfx.core which is what we're going to use to actually create this um so there's going to be a few things we're going to use to go ahead and give ourselves the script to work we're just going to be making it in this video when you join the server so we are not going to be doing it as a command or anything we're just going to do it when you join the server now we can i'll add a command in a future video if you want me to but today we're just going to be going over when you join the server so we're just going to do public and then the name of the class in my case it's class one and then i'm just going to go ahead and do this and we are going to put some stuff in here so we're going to actually make a method that delays giving the loadout until we are in the server for a moment the reason we do this is because if we give the player it too early it actually won't give it to them at all which is quite unfortunate but we're just going to do a tick and then we're just going to do the plus sign equals and then on tick and we haven't made our on tick method yet but we will soon so we're just going to leave this right here the second thing we're going to have to add is actually the event handler for the player spawn so we're going to do event handler and then we are going to put exactly this is very important if you don't have it exactly as player spawned it will not work correctly. Keep that in mind because I ran into that issue when I was actually coding this. It really caused a bunch of problems. Again, plus sign, equal sign. And then we're going to do a new action. And then inside this action, it's actually going to be a vector three action. The reason it's vector three is because that's how they are spawning. And then we are going to put once again, player spawned. And we are not going to have this method yet because we haven't created it and there is going to be errors. So what you should do is you should just go ahead and import these vectors um, and all of these things. So you can see we have imported the event handler and you can see we are using systems and the citizen FX core. This is all we need right now. And this is all these errors are going to go away in a moment when we go ahead and import all the other things we're going to need so why don't we go ahead and create our tick class so we're going to do private and then we're going to do a sync which means it's going to be as running as an async task and then it's just going to be called on tick just like we designated above because now we're going to go ahead and do this make sure you import tasks so it doesn't error and you can get rid of these two little brackets you don't need those and then you're just going to do a wait and then delay and we're going to delay it by 100 there we go so you can see that on tick uh, error has gone away. Now it is actually time to go ahead and set up our player's spawned method. So once again, we're going to do a private void. We're going to name it exactly what we put above, player spawn. Then we're going to do from source. Um, and make sure you do this with a parentheses before there. So from source, and then it's going to be vector three. And then we're just going to call it spawn. 
just like that. So you can see, there we go. We've added the player spawn method. This is where we're actually going to add the code that is going to give us the weapon. So in this case, we're gonna do game.playerPed. It's very important you do player ped, not um, NPC ped or any of those. Weapons dot remove all. So we're gonna remove any default weapons when the player first joins the game in case they've had them before. And then we're gonna do player ped weapons and then we're gonna do give. And then what we're gonna do here is we're gonna get a weapons hack and just put the pistol or whatever the name of it you want so we want to give our players let's say a stun gun so if we just want to give them a stun gun we could do stun gun and then the ammo count so i'm just going to give them 100 ammo of the stun gun even though it's technically unlimited should it be equipped when they join we're going to say false and should we say is the ammo loaded i'm going to just say true in this case so there's no reload or anything needed for that and we're just going to give the player exactly the same thing so if you want you could even copy this and just change out the weapon hash in this case i'm going to give them a pistol there we go so now we have given them that that's all we have to do but we are actually going to send them a message to let them know that they have this so we're going to trigger an event so we're going to do trigger event and this event is actually going to be the chat message so to trigger the chat message the event name will be chat dot add message and then you're going to do a comma and then you're going to do new and then you're actually going to expand it down so the reason we're doing this is we're actually going to add different methods in here for this. So color equals new, and then we're just going to use the default color, which is in their documentation, which is 25500, just like that. Then we are going to set the if it's going to be a multi-line message. And in this case, I'm just going to set it to multi-line, even though it won't be actually that long. And then we're actually going to add the args, which is actually what it's going to say. Once again, we're just going to do this exactly how we did it with our callouts in the past. And we're just going to call it load out. And then we can go and said, um, that's going to be like the name name. And then you're just going to say, you have received the loadout. And make sure you actually put this comma outside of the parentheses or that will not work there we go so we have our loadout you have received the loadout you can use color codes as well if you want so i can make this uh yellow i believe yellow is n3 um and there we go we have actually successfully coded but you can okay so you can still see we have successfully done this but this event handler here is erroring the reason why is i forgot an s so we add the s and you can see event handlers there's no errors anymore we are good to go we have successfully coded our loadout now how do we export well first we have to actually go into the project settings um the reason we go into the project settings is because we actually have to set it to export as a dot net dot dll make sure you're actually going into the project settings by the way not the overall settings and then you're just going to go where it says assembly name and add .NET to the back of it just so it exports as a .NET file. Go in and click OK and you can see it has gone ahead and done that. We go in and build our project and you can see it's building. There we go. Build succeeded. If we open up where we built our project, in my case it's just a folder, debug, you can see YouTube loadout.net.dll. This is what's going to run. Now we actually have to make 5M recognize this by setting up an FS manifest file. Let's go in and do that. All right, so to set up our FS manifest file, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new file and we're gonna make it a text document. One thing I would recommend doing is making sure in under view, you have file name extensions on because this isn't gonna work if you don't do that. We're gonna rename this text document, getting rid of the doc text at the end as well, and name it fxmanifest.lua. Go ahead and say, hey, this will be changed. Press yes. And I'll go ahead and open this with either Notepad or Notepad++. If you just click open with it, we'll say, hey, what do you want to open this with? In my case, I'm going to open it with a Notepad rather than Notepad++, so you can use it on your computer if you don't have it, but it's going to be the exact same. So we have opened it a Notepad. There's a few things we're going to have to uh, specify in here. The SS version, in my case, I'm going to do... Uh, you can literally just copy this. I'll put this whole thing down in the description if you want. Um, the only thing you would have to change would be the author name the and the client script part of this. So I'm just going to go ahead and add that. We're going to add the games. And what this does is it actually just specifies if it can be used on GTA 5 or if it could be used on Red Dead as well. And then we're just going to go ahead and put the author name. So author. And then I'm just going to say BGHD development because that's who is creating this. There we go. Uh, if you want a description, you can add description here. And I'm just going to name it test resource, just like that. And if you want a version number, you can also add that here, 1.1.0. Now, this is the part which actually uh, requires your file name. So in our case, it's YouTube loadout. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do client and then uh, underscore script. 
And then in here, what you're going to do is specify that client script. In our case, it's YouTube loadout.net.dll and close that bracket just like that. And we are good to go. Go ahead and save that. And that is our FS manifest file. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a new folder and we're just going to throw both of these in here. We're just going to name it like uh, YT loadout or something. We're going to throw both of these files, the .NET DLL and that FS manifest in there. We're going to take this folder and we're going to throw it onto our 5M resource folder. And then we're going to go ahead and go to our server.cfg file, edit it with notepad or notepad plus plus and add at the bottom ensure and then the name of the folder. In our case, it's YouTube loadout, I believe, just to make sure that is what exactly it is. We check our folder, make sure it's that it's YT loadout. See, perfect. Almost messed up there. YT loadout. Then if we go in and start our server, we're just going to check our console log here and make sure it said started resource YT loadout. And it did. So we know we're good. Now we're going to hop in game. And when we join the game, we should get those items that we have specified. All right. So here we are. We are loading into the game now. And if everything worked, we should get those items that we have specified. And we should also see in chat that message that we've specified. Loadout, you've received the loadout. There we go. We got our sun gun and the pistol, which we specified exactly with the amount of ammo. And it is loaded. You can see there for us as well. And obviously they work just like your normal game, unless you have any other resources stopping that. There we go. We have successfully created our first 5M C Sharp script. If you want to see a tutorial on adding commands to this to like clear your loadout or give back the default loadout, please let me know by leaving a like, subscribing, and commenting on the video. Very much appreciated. All the code for this is also on GitHub. I've included a link with that below in the description as well, along with the FS manifest file and everything else you may need for this tutorial. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. My name is Needles. I will see you in two days for the next video. Goodbye.